Good day students, welcome to mathgodserve.com. In this clip we're going to be going over how to determine the quadrant an angle lies in. Alright, so the instructions for the problem we're going to be doing are as follows. We are to state the quadrant that theta lies in Uh, with the given conditions. Okay, so um, the conditions that we're looking at are as follows for problem one. Let's say we have sine of theta is less than zero and cosine of theta is greater than zero. So with this condition, um, where does theta lie? What quadrant does it lie in? So what we're going to do, we're going to create our coordinate system and then we're going to make use of a nice little mnemonic device to help us remember um, what the sign of the six trig functions are um, on our coordinate system. Okay, so this is quadrant number one, this is quadrant one, quadrant two, quadrant three, and quadrant four. Now, um, the tool that will help us, or the acronym that will help us remember what the signs of the trig functions are, um, on the four coordinates are, awesome students take calculus, okay? So you are, we are starting from quadrant number one and we have awesome students take calculus. Now what do these letters mean? Let's start with A. The letter A represents all. It tells us that all six trig functions are greater than zero. What are the six trig functions? They are sine and the reciprocal cosecant, cosine and its reciprocal secant, tan and its reciprocal cotangent. All of these are positive or greater than zero. That's what the A in awesome students take calculus means. How about S? Can you guess what that means? S means um, sine in its reciprocal. Okay, so sine and its reciprocal cosecant are positive. Everything else is negative. All right. And then T, T represents tan and its reciprocal cotangent. So tan and cotangent are positive. Everything else is negative. C, what does C represent? C means that cosine and um, its reciprocal secant are positive. Everything else is negative. Okay, so let's go back to the problem that we are addressing here. We have sine is less than zero or negative and cosine is greater than zero or positive. So what we're going to do, let's take a look at um, what the signs of sine and cosine are in each quadrant and then we can determine the correct quadrant that theta lies in. Let's start with quadrant number one, A. What's the sign of sine and cosine in A? For A, all six are positive so that automatically tells us that sine is going to be greater than zero. How about cosine? cosine is going to be greater than zero. Why again? Because A means that all six trig functions are all positive. All right. Now does that match the given condition um, that we provided? The answer is no. So since it doesn't match, theta is not in quadrant one. Okay, we have a mismatch because sine has to be less than zero, but it's greater than zero here. All right, let's move on to quadrant two. S. What does S tell us? S tells us that sine and cosecant 
are the only positive trig functions in this quadrant. So sine is greater than zero. How about cosine? Since cosine is neither um, sine or cosecant, it is going to be negative. So cosine is going to be less than zero while cosine while while sine is greater than zero. Does that meet the conditions that are provided here? The answer is no. It meets um, neither the first nor the second, okay? So this is not where theta is located. Now let's move on to quadrant three. T tells us that only tan and cotangent are positive. Here everything else is negative. So sine is going to be negative and cosine is going to be negative also. All right. This um, pair that we have here, the first one, sine less than zero, meets this condition right here. But the second um, inequality we have, cosine less than zero, doesn't meet this um, condition right here. Cosine is um, negative here, but the condition is that cosine has to be positive. So quadrant three is not the quadrant that we're looking for. So based on elimination, our answer should be uh, quadrant number four, correct? Let's go ahead and verify that that's the case. So what does C tell us? C tells us that only cosine and secant are positive. Everything else, which includes sine, is negative. So sine is going to be less than zero. Cosine is um, mentioned in the C um, component as being greater than zero. So cosine is greater than zero. Does that match the condition that we're given? Absolutely. Sine less than zero, cosine greater than zero, and that's the quadrant that we're looking at. All right. So let's go ahead and um, write down the final answer. Theta lies in quadrant four since sine uh, is less than zero and cosine is greater than zero in this quadrant. Okay. Okay, now let's take a look at uh, question number two. So for question two, let's say that um, we have a situation where cosecant theta is positive and secant theta is uh, negative. All right, so since you've seen an example, I'm illustrating how to exhaust all the coordinates, looking at the signs of the given ratios that are given trig functions that are provided, we're going to um, do the same problem, but we, we're going to use method of elimination to facilitate the quadrant determination process. Okay, so we have quadrant one, two, three, four. And we know that awesome students t take calculus. All right, so what we're going to do is just look at the first condition, the first inequality, and use that to eliminate um, quadrants, and then you look at the second one to finish off the problem. All right, so if you look at the first um, trig function, we're told that cosecant is greater than zero. So in what quadrants do we have a positive sign for cosecant? We know that A represents all six, so cosecant could be here, because we know cosecant is greater than zero here. And where else is cosecant greater than zero? Cosecant is greater than zero wherever its reciprocal is greater than zero. Cosecant is equal to the reciprocal of sine, so wherever S is positive, cosecant will be positive also. So cosecant is greater than zero here. So what does that enable us to do? It enables us to eliminate quadrants three and four since cosecant is negative in these two. Now to narrow down um, our two options right here to 
exactly one coordinate, which would be the answer, we'll take a look at the second condition, which is that secant is less than zero or negative. Now, in which of these quadrants is secant less than zero or negative? Secant is less than zero in quadrant two. How do we know that? We know that um, secant is less than zero here because every trig function is positive in quadrant one. Okay, so quadrant one is not what we're looking for. The correct quadrant we're theta lies in is quadrant number two. Okay, so let's write down our answer. Theta lies in quadrant uh, two since um, cosecant cosecant is positive cosecant is positive and secant is negative in that quadrant okay so that's how you determine what quadrant theta lies in using the um, acronym Awesome students take calculus. All right, so that's that. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch this presentation. I really appreciate it. If you found the contents of this tutorial helpful in your study of um, trig functions, do give us a thumbs up. Your positive feedback is very valuable to us. If you have any questions or comments about the contents of this presentation, just place it in the comment section below and we'll be um, more than glad to support you. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel for updates to other tutorials such as this. More clips can be found on mathgotserved.com. Thanks again for watching and have a wonderful day. Goodbye.